The governor's ideas will not make it in the final budget. That includes legalizing medical and recreational marijuana. Evers' proposal would distribute tax revenue from legalization to counties to support their mental health and substance use disorder services. The Wisconsin Policy Forum recently released some research on the changing marijuana landscape and the impacts on Wisconsin. And here to discuss that study is senior research associate Ari Brown. Thanks for joining us, Ari. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. All right, so first off, you studied the easy driving access that people in our state had to dispensaries. What did you learn about that? Yeah, so I think one of the things that, that we were kind of thinking about in the background of this report and also in the background of the, the governor's budget being released uh, very recently, um, you know, over the last couple of years, I think there have been a number of proposals uh, in Wisconsin to legalize marijuana. Um, but, but while that's been happening since 2019, um, both Illinois and Michigan uh, have set up pretty extensive, uh, you know, regimes for recreational marijuana. Um, Minnesota is very close. Um, there's a bill circulating there um, that would legalize recreational marijuana, and that's likely to pass sometime this year. So I think we were curious in the context of the state budget coming out, um, you know, the governor likely proposing both medical and recreational marijuana legalization, but those proposals likely being shot down. Um, just where kind of Wisconsin stands now uh, relative to where it did in 2019. And I think what we found was that, um, you know, even compared to four years ago, uh, there are a lot of Wisconsinites that live just very, very close to a, uh, you know, quasi legally operating recreational marijuana dispensary. I say quasi quasi legally as it's not uh, currently legal at the federal level, um, but it is at the state level, both in Illinois and Michigan. Um, and I think, you know, when you think about Wisconsin's population, um, the two biggest cities, Milwaukee and Madison, are are both fairly close driving distance wise from the Illinois border. Um, and Illinois has certainly uh, set up a number of dispensaries kind of acknowledging that uh, that reality. Um, we note two specifically in uh, East Dubuque, Illinois and in South Beloit, Illinois, that are literally within minutes of the Wisconsin border. Um, you know, you, you hear anecdotes of, uh, you know, people going to those dispensaries and seeing cars in the in the parking lot that are just all Wisconsin license plates. So I think it's, um, you know, in the context of where Wisconsin stands now relative to its neighbors, I think it's just an important reality to uh, to acknowledge that, you know, despite our laws not changing really at all over the last couple of years, the fact that laws have changed in, in some of our neighboring states really does have an impact on, you know, what life is like in Wisconsin. You mentioned Michigan and Illinois have had legalized recreational marijuana for a couple of years now. Economically, what has that meant for state tax revenue in those states? Yeah, so both states have garnered uh, a fairly decent amount of, of uh, tax revenue. So in Michigan, um, they uh, have a 10% excise tax uh, on, on recreational marijuana there. Um, in 2022, I believe the uh, their total uh, um, revenue from that amount was $111 million. Um, Illinois has a much more complicated uh, scheme um, with, you know, taxes depending on the potency of, of the substance. Um, they also have different types of excise taxes and gross receipts taxes. They've raised an even higher amount that I believe is in kind of the 400 to 500 million dollar range with also local governments taking in an additional somewhere between 100 and 200 million. So it's not an in, insubstantial amount of revenue. Um, you know, I think when we're talking about uh, kind of the bigger picture here. So the governor's proposal uh, for, for the state budget was recently released. And if you look at kind of the biggest bin, um, what we would associate with uh, like total state functions um, for operating purposes, general purpose revenue, uh, the governor's proposal is in kind of the 23 to $24 billion range for each of the next uh, two budgetary years. So when you're talking about, you know, the potential for a couple hundred million dollars, that's obviously not a game changer in terms of um, you know, the, the kind of overall picture, but it, it is still a very substantial amount of revenue um, and certainly, you know, something that could boost a lot of existing state programs. That tax res revenue is being used for very different things in different states, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I think especially Michigan and Illinois that uh, I believe are the 10th and 11th states to legalize recreational marijuana, uh, you know, had a number of states to look to already to see what they've done. Um, and they kind of took, um, you know, similar, but but I think slightly divergent routes. Um, Michigan devotes a certain amount of its revenue to uh, to transportation, to K-12 education. Illinois has a much more complicated scheme um, after paying for things like administration. Uh, you know, they have a, a program that kind of acknowledges the reality of how um, the, the illegality of marijuana has impacted uh, different communities differently. Um, and they, they have a program uh, that some of their revenue goes back into uh, to try to right some of those historical wrongs. Um, 
So, and, and they also have some going to education in a lot of different other uh, areas. Um, but I think both states have experimented and, and seen, you know, a fairly uh, healthy amount of revenue go into their, their respective programs and, and been able to do, uh, you know, these new and exciting initiatives with that revenue. Legalization would certainly bring in revenue, but are there any concerning trends that some of these states have seen since they've legalized recreational use? Yeah, so it, it is also still a little bit early. Uh, it's kind of hard to say just because both states are within the first couple of years. Um, and I think that's, you know, one thing that, that certainly researchers who are uh, interested in this topic and concerned about this topic are paying attention to. Um, you know, there, there are a number of studies that that kind of look at the impact that uh, a recreational law has on various different potential kind of negative side effects. Um, a lot of those studies are mixed and a lot of them are also inconclusive. I think one of the things though that you generally hear about that, that there is some evidence to support um, kind of the basis here is that um, a, a recreational marijuana law can have some impact on um, the prevalence of drug driving, uh, driving accidents, uh, and, and auto fatalities and things like that. Um, I think, you know, we cite in our, in our piece, a story from Michigan where you have, um, you know, a, a city that is right on the border of the Michigan, Indiana border. Um, and you have a police chief there who, who says something along the lines of, uh, you know, individuals in our community, we're not seeing more, um, you know, possession, like limit breaking. We're not seeing a ton of you know, most of society is functioning functioning as it did before. But one of the things that we are seeing is that there are uh, a higher amount of, uh, you know, driving under the influence um, accidents and a lot of those caused by marijuana. So I think that's something for um, Wisconsin lawmakers to be cognizant of, especially when, um, you know, legal or quasi legal pur purchases of marijuana um, for Wisconsin residents would necessarily have to happen uh, in another state like Illinois or Michigan that is then going to require individuals to drive back across the border. Um, so I, I'm sure you have, you know, especially um, law enforcement agencies that are right on the border of those two states that are that are cognizant of these issues. Um, but just for it to be recognized at the state level, I think would be a, a fairly important regulatory change. This will certainly be a topic for discussion all year once again here in the Capitol. We appreciate your time and insight on this subject, Ari. Yeah, thanks so much for having me.